Dan, Viksha, please go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and please introduce yourself, your name, major, any minors you have, and pre-professional tracks, and what school you go to. For sure. So hello, my name is Anviksha Srivastava. I am a biochemistry major on the pre-med track, and I go to UC Riverside. All right, to start us off, what made you choose your major? So I knew that I wanted to do something in the science field, obviously, because mm -hmm. my future career is in the medical area. Mm -hmm. And I loved biology and chemistry. And biochemistry is like a good middle ground between the two. And it's more chemistry based, according to the sources that I've heard from upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. And it gives a more deeper understanding to like chemical structures and obviously some skills that I will need in the future. So I decided that biochemistry would be good for me to choose right now. Oh, that's great. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, going back to high school, uh, personally, how did you feel about the college application process? So it was definitely a struggle initially because everything sounds so new when you're in high school and yeah. all of a sudden you're given this like responsibility to decide your future and like the next four years of your life. Yeah. But as I got more informed, it definitely became easier talking mm -hmm. to counselors and uh, college representatives and my parents were a big support. I think the more you learn, the more simpler the process becomes. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, How did you get most of your information about schools and the process in general? So I did some of my own research about mm -hmm. colleges that I would be interested in. And based on the places that I wanted to go to, I talked to my counselors and some colleges that I wanted to go to had college representatives come to my school. So mm -hmm. I went to those after school sessions and I talked yeah. to the representatives, learned about the application process and went mm -hmm. from there. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely shared a similar experience. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, before and after applying to the school, did you visit the colleges that you were interested in? So my idea, I discussed with my parents how this would go, and I decided that researching online before I applied would be a good idea, and then yeah. going to visit the colleges in person after I got accepted would help me decide where to go. So I did all of my visiting after I got accepted. Mm, so you, okay, yeah, that's, that's a good strategy, I would say. Um, <laughs> did you actually end up reaching out to students attending the university or like friends or parents that previously went to receive I more did. information? I did. So this I did before I applied. I, to mm -hmm. get like a better understanding of if I should apply at all, because our counselors encouraged us to apply to the colleges as if that was the only place we got accepted we would go so mm -hmm. that way we have like a focus list and yeah. we're not wasting our money so for that reason i talked to people who go to those colleges and asked what their experiences were like and like how they would do it differently or if they would recommend it and mm -hmm. i made my list based on like similar shared interests and yeah so i definitely yeah. did talk to people uh, how would you rate the overall difficulty of the application process in itself? Um, the application process itself was not difficult. I would say maybe like a four, mostly because time management and figuring out what to write is the biggest problem that I faced. Mm -hmm. um, I... I decided to do most of my research my schoolwork and writing my essays and like completing the application simultaneously. Wait, do you mind repeating that? You kind of lagged a little bit. Oh, sure. Yeah. So for the entire process, I would say 
uh, my senior grade and um, during the summer with like college research and getting my uh and everything that I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. Uh, it kind of happened again. Oh, it's okay. That's okay. All right, do you want uh, reading again? So how do you rate the overall difficulty of the application process to reiterate? So I would say the application process itself was maybe a four because mm -hmm. it was not too difficult. The hardest part that I thought was um, finding time to write the essays and manage my grades at the same time. Mm -hmm. What I did was got all the harder stuff out of the way during my summer of uh, 11th grade. I got my extracurriculars and anything that I wanted to write about together in one place. Mm -hmm. And I um, jotted down ideas. So that way over the school year, I would just focus on writing the essay and putting my application together. Mm, that's pretty solid. How long did the overall process take you? It took me about maybe two months because mm -hmm. I applied to a few colleges and mm -hmm. I wanted to just take my time to go over everything and yes, make sure that I sure. was confident in what I was sending to colleges. So mm -hmm. I had multiple people review my essays so that they could give me tips and I could get different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And when I felt good enough, that's when I submitted my application. Yeah. If you could go back and change anything about the college application process, what you, would you have done differently? I would have um, talked to my parents in a more informative discussion because I think during the process, we definitely had some differences on which colleges I should apply to and places that I thought were very solid to go to. My parents have like different ideas because mm. sometimes our parents know us better than we know ourselves. And yes. so learning about their perspectives and what they envision for us is also good sometimes. So I think that's something I would change. I would like have more informed discussions with my parents. All right, that's solid. All right, so you actually ended up at UC Riverside, experienced your first year there. How and why did you decide to go to UC Riverside? So I chose UC Riverside because it's a more research-oriented university, and I felt like I would be able to get some um, hands-on experience in like research labs because they really encourage students doing that. Mm -hmm. On top of that, I got accepted into the biochemistry program, which is considered one of the harder programs in their college. And so mm -hmm. I wanted a chance to be able to experience that. And mm -hmm. then on top of that, when we went to go visit, the entire atmosphere was so like fitting for me because everyone was kind and outgoing. Oh. And there were um, many programs that I was interested in joining. And so I felt like UC Riverside would be a good place to be. Oh, that's so exciting. So like, the, like when you find somewhere where you ha can envision a lot of opportunities, like, yeah, it's like just, a like, really exciting yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was so happy you were able to experience that. Thank you so much. All right, speaking of going there already and like experiencing things, what advice would you have for people trying to get used to a new place, making new friends with different backgrounds? Because I know a lot of our listeners might like come from somewhere they've grown up their entire lives or like just be having to transition to a new place. Like any tips in general? So I would say that it's okay to be a little afraid and have some reservations because yeah. change is always scary, but mm -hmm. change is not always bad and to um, embrace it and try to focus on the things that scare you sort of going sorry um it's okay try to, try to face the things that scare you and figure out how to overcome those fears so if your fear is living away from home then maybe 
um, schedule in more video calls or like figure out how you can make it a little less uncomfortable to go to college because the more you learn how to deal with these changes, the better prepared you will be for life beyond college. Mm, I I would agree with that and like that definitely like taking on challenges that you haven't experienced before will help you a lot with like personal growth and development and like exactly. will help you in the long run like in so many different ways yeah um, all right going back to classes in, at Riverside how are your class sizes do you personally prefer a larger or smaller class environment and what was that experience like for you uh, classes, there's a varying size. So for the lectures, we fit in a huge lecture hall. There's about 300 students. Mm -hmm. And the professor teaches like either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. And mm -hmm. for discussions, we have shorter class sizes. So we have like 20, 30 people. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, I think both class sizes are good because mm -hmm. with lectures, you get the experience of being in like a more just like steady focused environment where the professor is yeah. talking at you and you're learning. Yeah. On the other hand, like discussions oh, and labs as well are like uh, shorter class sizes. So for discussions and labs, you kind of get a more detailed approach. So mm -hmm. you get a more hands on on experience for labs and for discussions you can ask your TAs questions that maybe got like drowned with the professor because the professor is trying to go over the main lecture material so I think both class sizes have like their perks. All right that's nice um what has your experience been like with lab classes? If uh, I really enjoy lab classes mm -hmm. um so for my first year so chemistry and biology lab classes. Uh, chemistry classes I had to do online because of COVID, but um, mostly like when I started for chemistry, mm -hmm. it was very nice because we got to learn how to do titrations and work with different types of acids and bases for the yeah. first part of chemistry. And yeah. so I got to learn a lot. We learned how to work with the spectrophotometer and just oh, the big words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the hands-on experience was very nice. Mm -hmm. um, biology labs, unfortunately, when I started biology labs, COVID had started, yeah. so I had to do it all online. I never got any hands-on experience for biology, mm -hmm. but for biology, we would do like dilutions and like studying diffusion osmosis mm -hmm. and like agros cubes and um, phenothaline and such so I think if I had been able to do biology labs hands-on I would have learned a lot as well mm -hmm. there's okay. a difference between online and in person yeah I definitely <laughs> feel like there's a really big difference between things we have to do online and but like safety is really important and so we must all take care and make yes, exactly. um, changes that way but yeah um, what was something that you got to personally do in college you weren't able to do back in high school or your hometown? Uh, I think in college I got to feel a little more independent and mm -hmm. free to make my own decisions for my academics. Yeah. Because in high school we have a very set path. Like if you mm -hmm. take this class, you will end up in this class. But with college, you can decide, okay, if I take this class and I don't like it, I don't have to go down this path. I can change my major or I can like choose something else. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I didn't realize was a freedom that I would be able to have. Yes. And so I really appreciated that in college, that I got to expand my academic learning and like tailor it to what I want. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Uh, what has your experience of living in college been like for you personally? So I had a little bit of a different experience than most first years because mm -hmm. I didn't live in a dorm. At UC Riverside, it's not mandatory to live in the dorm first year. So mm -hmm. uh, I found a roommate and I got an apartment that was about like 10 minutes walking distance to the campus. Mm -hmm. I definitely enjoyed it because it made me 
feel like a little bit more grown up and the privacy that comes with having an apartment, the quietness uh, it was different than what would be in a dorm. Yeah. And I got to face like different situations that maybe you wouldn't in a dorm, such as like having to deal with maintenance, paying rent. Mm. So it really immersed me in the adult. Adult. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, I enjoyed living in an apartment. Oh, that's great. Would you say it's harder to make friends because you lived in an apartment? Because I know a lot of people would recommend like, oh, you should live in a dorm because you can socialize more with people because you'll have people, excuse me, on your floor or like people you live with who you coincidentally will just intermingle with more. Like, what would you I feel say? Like it's in the middle. I definitely made a lot of really good friends but mm -hmm. sometimes I would definitely feel the the kind of pull where someone who has been with the person like overnight and they spent like the day painting nails in their dorms versus <laughs> someone who like only saw them on campus there mm -hmm. is a little bit of a closeness difference so it's yeah. not really about making friends that's difficult it's about deepening those relationships after you mm. leave class and so i think dorms are very helpful in that way where once you've made those connections you can further deepen them and like get closer to the person since you see them more often yeah so i think that's a difference i see that um did you end up living by yourself or with another person or I lived with a roommate, so I, I just was very lucky. Uh, mm -hmm. She went to the same high school as me and middle school, so oh yeah, so we had a good connection anyways. And then it just got better when we lived together. And oh wow, that's we great! Both shared the same, yeah, we shared the same academic values and like mm -hmm. respect each other's opinion. And so I think it was a really good roommate fit for us. Yeah. All right, that that sounds like great and like the best that could have happened it really was <laughs> obviously when you leave home it's hard to mm -hmm. be by yourself so having someone yeah. to share the whole adult experience with was really yeah. nice must have been really grounding to experience that with someone oh absolutely absolutely <laughs> all right going back to college life what are some extracurriculars you're participating in and um, are you in any pre-professional organizations, research, any clubs you do for fun that aren't related to your studies? Yeah, so just. I I joined this club called Shadow MD because mm -hmm. I obviously my future path is medicine doctor. So mm -hmm. uh, this club allows us to actually shadow medical professionals who are just doing their daily like schedule and I thought it was really nice to be able to see that more than that we do community service so mm -hmm. we made um little hygiene kits for the people at the oh. Riverside Free Clinic yeah it was really nice and then during Christmas time we made uh holiday cards for the little kids who are just going through you know hospital life yeah and then beyond that we do fundraisers to help any way we can so I really enjoy being a part of that club. It's mm -hmm. a little exclusive because I had to go through an application and an interview process, but mm -hmm. I definitely say that it was worth it because yeah. I enjoy every minute that I'm in the club. So that was some oh. extracurricular. And um, I'm hoping to be in a research lab soon. I've been doing mm -hmm. some research on which labs to apply to yeah and I've been emailing professors and hopefully when everything opens up in person I'll be able to join a lab all right well with that I'm sure you will do great and like find amazing opportunities you. coming your way especially with the amount of work you put into everything thank you so much <laughs> of course um what was your biggest struggle coming into college and do you believe you have overcome it kind of like a deeper territory question <laughs> so i think my biggest struggle would be leaving home 
um, mm -hmm. as obviously I'm sure it is for most people, because it's just a little different to be just by yourself. And I feel yeah. like the moment when my family dropped me off at the apartment, I was like, wow, this is really happening. Like there is like a moment of just silence and you, you just like really take a minute to take it and like, this is college now. And so um, I felt that a lot throughout the first maybe week or so where it, everything's different. You don't come home and like tell your parents about your day. You go home and you call your parents. It's different. But I think I've definitely overcome that uh, with all the support that I've gotten from them and all the new friends that I've made. I learned that while your family will always be there to support you, yeah. it's good to move forward and be a little more independent on your own as well. Yeah, so, like branch out and see exactly. other people, like that kind of thing. Well, I love that for you. Um, Thank you. Do you have plans after undergraduate? Yes, I hope to apply to a medical school and complete mm -hmm. the All right, that sounds great. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I know the MCAT sounds very terrifying. I'm sure you will do great. <laughs> ah, thank you for your confidence. I'm quite afraid. <laughs> you, you will tackle things with a lot of gusto <laughs> thank you that is the plan <laughs> all right um do you ever actually worry about finding a job in the future or what the job market holds for you or do you think it's um, pretty set now, because of med school i am hoping that it will be set because of med school but mm -hmm. again, you never know the future uh things yeah. could obviously change and yeah. I'm the type of person who likes to plan things ahead of time, so mm -hmm. I definitely do think about it, and I think about how um, different medical careers that I might choose yeah. might have different you job know, market opportunities. Job markets, yes. Mm -hmm. But I feel like as time goes on and I get closer to that stage mm -hmm. in my life, I will have a better idea of what I want to do. Yeah. And so I think staying informed, like I said at the beginning, is the best thing I can do right now and kind of just like study the trend and make an informed decision when it when the time yeah. comes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's solid. Um to wrap things up kind of already, <laughs> if you could give advice to high school students, what would it be? I think to high school students I would say never give up because high school is definitely a struggle. Mm -hmm. So if you have a big picture in mind, like mm -hmm. this is what I want to do in my life, this is a college that I want to go to, mm -hmm. it really helps you to stay motivated. And it doesn't even have yeah. to be like a super far future plan, just yeah. like small things that keep you motivated throughout the hellish four years where you're struggling with like teachers and like social life. It really helps in like staying grounded with something that keeps you focused and like motivated to keep going. So I think that's definitely what I would um, suggest to high school students and just to never give up because things will always get better. Yeah, for sure. All right, thank you so much for joining us. This is a lot of valuable advice and like perspective <laughs> on being a pre-med student. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> thank All you. Right. Of course.